I see the light, so I ain't running away. I see the light, but it's hard to find a way. I see the light, so I ain't running away. I see the light, but it's hard to find a way. I'm running away. See the light. The light is the spirit that cannot be hid. The light is the example I show to my kids. The light is what I need to overcome my lust. I'm grabbing my fringes without them on dust. This not the music to get you hyper dancing. This that wisdom music for spiritual advancement. I can see the pain. I know how you. The struggle is real I need that light to help me cut up my family and friends I need this light to help me atone for my sins I need the light to help me see when the devil attacks Without this light I might as well go back to being I black I see the light, so I ain't running away I see the light, but it's hard to find a way I see the light so I ain't running away I see the lie, but it's hard to find a way I'm running away I'm running away mm, I see the light I see the light, but I keep falling down I see the light, but I keep falling down So stressed out, don't know how long I'm gonna last, cause I keep falling down All these excuses, that's why you're losing When the last time you prayed Ain't open your Bible in days You don't even congregate How you gonna save your soul When you don't afflict your soul This is the end of days Blaspheme and you burn in flames I see the light. So I ain't running away. I see the light, but it's hard to find a way. I see the light, so I ain't running away. I see the light, but it's hard to find a way. I'm running away. I see the light. Cross mountain ranges, split cell. Mention my ambitions, be intimate still Make provisions, I know I need to be disciplined I pray the Lord don't take my spirit But replenish and finish the sinner I know it's care center, but limited I pray that I'm not bound as nooses that hang And hope that I am just as loose as my chains I troop, jumping through hoops My jukes is insane, yeah, I still trip Miss, I still slip, learning not to be idle But also practice in stillness Meditate, I regulate, shackle my illness Death is a submission, I double back with the kill switch Set it straight, educate, back to fulfillment This is not my rest I'd rather rest in resilience Faced with opposition I battle my inner demons And steady ready Cause you know it's only for a season When dealing with these bad habits
application made by short steppers The minor lower state So our brain distort messages Break to swallow up a pride And make more effort, yeah Or we can talk like brothers And make us both better elevate Not to separate And I'm making improvements Not to seem reprobate It hopes that my spirit ain't tuned to acclamation Yeah, and I pray, make me strong as a Lacedaemonian on the undercard with seven spirit pilgrims. Uh, to speak of problems, well, I can name a billion, let that marinate the things I've seen through the systems day to day. They always find a way to shift the blame. I'd rather better wait, captivate, uh, a mess of uh, and have my consciousness submission. Eliminate thoughts, not the prey and inhibition. But if you do, that's not reasonable grounds to predicate all these bad habits. This word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we've been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we've been painting the pictures like the time drawn Oh yeah, this word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we've been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we've been painting the pictures like the time drawn I didn't been tried in that fire and made it out cold Ain't my name, he could just wear the really got well cold I'm watching my brothers be teaching in different time zones Come to your town, we in line and it's about a mile long Up in the spirit, you know we gon' bring it out strong Passing out demons and breathing life in them dry bones Remember when I was sleeping, yeah, I was out cold Thought I was reading the Bible, but had my eyes closed the bewitching the naughtiness in the midst of the lawless You either fit what they calling us or you fit for his calling Just no redemption is drawing out Don't be impudent hearted, don't ever quit If you fall, remember from which you have fallen Yeah, this word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we been painting the pictures like the time drawn yeah, this word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we been painting the pictures like the time drawn Like this word is so wicked With all this pagan tradition It's like they want us to leave it But they won't get us to leave it We do so that we need it we the only people that are covered in. We the only people that they warn with. Demons come together for their crafty counsel. Making all the plans that we fall again. Paul said, fight that war. Streets so cold that our hearts turn froze. One way in, better take that road. Fit for the battle and we train for the war. Whoa. Lord, I just pray that I'm making it in. Scripture's cutting heavy, but I'm taking it in. Said since the beginning, we were chosen to win. But the world's so wicked, I can't die in my sin, no Yeah, this word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we been painting the pictures like the time drawn Oh yeah, this word is so wicked, it got my mind gone But we been flipping through scriptures, it got my mind blown And since we back on the mission with our forefathers' traditions And we been painting the pictures like the time I'm drawn
Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ, bless, Most High Christ, bless. Hope everybody having a good Thursday, Thursday right? Yes, yeah, Thursday. Look, this brother didn't even know. Hey, I ain't know either. You know what I'm saying? These days they flying by. I'll pray to the Most High, the Most High making the time short. All right, we that much closer to the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Tabernacles. I'll pray to the Most High. So, uh, you got IUIC Arkansas holding down daily bread this morning. You got myself, Officer Emmanuel. Officer Jeremiah. And today, very, very interesting topic. For your, for those of y'all that watch the uh, the Let's Talk Truth radio show that we do in Arkansas, this is upcoming Sunday, we uh, we doing a radio show on social media. Is it a blessing or a curse? You know what I'm saying? And, you know... Found that I was doing daily bread last night, and uh, you know, I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, saw the part part four, and then I had another class about, you know, what I'm saying leadership coming from the men's conference and all that, and then it was just like trying to put the, you know, the stuff together, and the most I was just like, ah, now I want you to do a class on this, you know what I'm saying? So the spirit just led me to put together this class about social media because I feel like I know it's definitely going to cut me. I don't know about everybody else. You know what I'm saying? But it's definitely a tool that can and will be used against you (laughs) in this truth if you are not, you know what I'm saying, you know, girded up with the armor of God. It is something that will be used against you. Now, the crazy thing is, like, what we starting to see in different congregations, I know in Arkansas, you know what I'm saying, some brothers and sisters, even though all these prophecies being fulfilled left and right, we clearly in the last days, you got the pandemic, you got the wildfires, you got the rumors of wars, you got the riots and the uproars among the people. And brothers and sisters still find themselves getting distracted. You know what I'm saying? Getting sidetracked by their lusts and, you know what I'm saying, this and this and that. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to deal, I wanted to start dealing with distractions in the last days. You know what I'm saying? So this one in particular, this morning, we going to deal with social media. All right? No one's willing, you know. The Lord let us continue. So before we get into it, y'all, we're going to go and send up the prayers. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. All praise. (laughs) All praise to the Most High. All right, so let's open up with 1 Peter Chapter 5 and verse 8. Hey, it's a two-edged sword, man. The Bible say that the Bible itself is a two-edged sword. So we're going to be swinging this thing this morning. All right? So make sure y'all taking notes. Make sure y'all ready. Lord's willing I get through all of this. I don't really know. I, I, it was hard for me to gauge how long it was going to take to get through all these scriptures I got. All right, so let's open up with 1 Peter 5 and 8. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 5 and verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So the Bible says to be sober and to be vigilant, because Satan is on a prowl, constantly trying to figure out ways to catch you slipping. And take you out. You know what I'm saying? Satan is constantly on the prowl. You know what I'm saying? Trying to take our precious souls 
from this precious knowledge of the truth, period. All right, so the Bible says, knowing that, knowing that Satan is constantly on that attack, you know, on that stalk, you got to make sure that you're sober, meaning clear-minded, and that you're vigilant. Can we get that word vigilant on the screen real quick? We got to make sure that we're being vigilant, especially in these last days. Read that, I was Vigilant, keeping careful, watch for possible danger or difficulty. So God said that we must be keeping a careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. All right, synonyms are observant, on the alert, attentive, awake, on one's toes, on one's guard, circumspect, mindful. Wide awake, unsleep. You know how people be like, stay woke. You know what I'm saying? God said, yeah, stay woke. All right, we got to make sure we woke. We got to be aware, understanding that all these different tools and devices out here, you know what I'm saying, was developed in some way, shape, or form to destroy you and lead you astray from God. All right, so we got to be mindful of these things. All right, you could drop that. Let's give 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 15. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 15. Uh For some are already turned aside after Satan. So when he said in 1 Peter, it wasn't like, no, you know, hey, watch out because I think, you know what I'm saying, Satan trying to get you. It's no, Satan and I already got some people. You know what I'm saying? It's real. It's people that was not sober. Not vigilant, and they got, you know, they got turned aside by Satan. But the reason I really wanted that scripture, read that, read it again. For some are already turned aside after Satan. It says some have already turned aside after Satan. Not let's get the definition of distract. Let's get the definition of distract on the screen. It should be the The first one from the left. All right, go ahead. Distract. Prevent someone from giving full attention to something. Right, so with us in this truth, you know what I'm saying, our full attention should be, of course, on the Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ and his work and everything that got to be done to, you know, get us to the kingdom. But, of course, Satan's job is to distract us, you know what I'm saying, from their work so we do not devote our full attention to the Most High. Hit that uh, that arrow, that down arrow. I want to show y'all something. All right? So it says synonyms, divert, deflect, sidetrack, turn aside. So a synonym, another term you can use for distract, it's turn aside, right? Read that scripture one more time. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5 and verse 15. Uh-huh. For some are already turned aside after Satan. So some people didn't already been distracted by Satan. Some people didn't already been distracted by Satan. You know what I'm saying? Because they were not vigilant. So we got to be mindful. We got to understand that it's real. Satan ain't playing. He good at what he do. He great at what he do. For real. From there, let's get 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. We're doing some building up here. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So the Bible is saying... You know what I'm saying? We cannot be ignorant of Satan's devices, the things that he uses to get an advantage of us. Because you got to think, you know, for us to have been destroyed and oppressed for 400 plus years, you know what I'm saying, and been sucked up into this society and all of that, and to learn this truth, you know, we got the upper hand. You know what I'm saying? Remember, Willie Lynn said it would take a phenomenon to break that curse. You know what I'm saying? But 
even though you can learn this truth and overcome all of them lies and come out of that web of you being destroyed, you know, and being a Negro in a mind, even then, when you overcome that, it's still certain things that Satan got in place to get an advantage over you, to still use you for his purpose. So, you know, we got to be aware, we got to be mindful of them devices that he got out there to get an advantage over us in this truth. We got to be more, we cannot be ignorant of the things that he will use to turn a brother against a brother, a sister against a sister. You know what I'm saying? To basically distract you from the greater purpose and eventually just lead you astray altogether. That's what Satan's trying to do. That's what his goal is. So we got to be mindful of the devices that he used to accomplish that. All right? So still building up here. Let's, let's get it established. Who exactly is Satan? You know what I'm saying? The Satan that we're dealing with in the earth. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to try to, you know what I'm saying, make sure we get the full understanding according to the Bible. Who is Satan? We're going to try to make it crystal clear for y'all this morning. I know a lot of y'all didn't already, you know, y'all heard these precepts, y'all already know, whatever. But everybody don't. So we're going to make it crystal clear the Satan that we're dealing with so we can get a clear understanding of whose devices are targeted against us. All right, read what you got. Revelation 12 and 3. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. Uh -huh. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. So the, the scriptures is speaking on a great red dragon. So is it talking about you know what I'm saying? One of them people, one of them things from Dragon Tales with the, you breathing fire and all of that. Is that what the great red dragon is speaking of? Let's see. Go to Job chapter 30 and verse 29. The book of Job chapter 30 and verse 29. For those of you who may not know, especially dealing with prophecies and revelation and things of that nature, the Bible says that we must understand these things via precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. All right? We can't just read Revelation and think, you know, dragons and stuff going to pop up in the earth. And that. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't talking about that. It's hip talk for an actual race of people. We're going to show you that precept upon precept. Read. I am a brother to Say what you're reading again? the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. Uh -huh. I am a brother to dragons hmm. and a companion to owls. Right. So he said, I am a brother to dragons. <laughs> so a brother to dragons. So this ain't Job ain't saying he half dragon, half man. He's saying that. You know what I'm saying? There's cases, there's instances in where people are referred to as dragons. In particular, think about it. We Jacob, right? Who was Jacob's brother? Mm. Who was Jacob's brother? Esau. <laughs> Let's read about him real quick. Let's go to Genesis 25, 25. Because it did say the great red dragon. Why did it put that detail in there? Why couldn't it be a, a, a green dragon? You know what I'm saying? Why couldn't it have been a blue dragon? Why it had to be a red dragon? Let's see. Let's see this brother <laughs> who was red. Read what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 25. Come on. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. So this sister Rebecca, she was pregnant with twins. You know what I'm saying? Meaning brothers. <laughs> and the first brother, brother, no, that's it, brother. The first brother came out red. And it said, oh, what? Like an hairy garment. So not only was he red, but he was hairy. All right? Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Read up. <laughs> and they called his name Esau. So this brother that really was a dragon, you know what I'm saying? 
that came out red, his name was Esau. You know what I'm saying? The progenitor of the Edomites, the Idumean race. Read them. And that, and that, oh, and on, after man. that came his brother out, and his head took hold on Esau's heel, uh -huh. and his name was called Jacob. Right, so his brother's name was Jacob. So Jacob's brother that came out red is the red dragon in Revelation, Esau. All right, let's go back to Revelation 12. Revelation 12 and 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns. Right, so that's referring to the seven coming markets in the EU slash NATO. All right, even further proof bagging up who the hell is talking about. You know what I'm saying? Who, who has that established in the earth? What race of people is that? The so-called white men, the Caucasians. But read on. And seven crowns upon his head. Come on. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Right. So when you read verse 1, the stars of heaven is referring to the 12 stars, which is going into the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. But read on. And the dragon stood before the woman. And the what? And the dragon stood before the woman. The dragon. Remember, the dragon ain't talking about no literal dragon. It's talking about your brother Esau. But it said the dragon stood before the woman. Read on. Which was ready to be delivered. Right, which was ready to be delivered. Meaning she was going to deliver a child. Was that it on that? No. Read on. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. So let's get some understanding on who this woman was. Let's go to Jeremiah 6 and 2 real quick. Jeremiah 6 and 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. Come on. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. So precept upon precept, the woman in Revelation ain't talking about an actual female. It's talking about the nation of Israel, Zion. That's the woman that the dragon Esau stood before to devour her child when it was finna be born. Let's go back and read that verse again. Verse 4. The, Revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 4. Come on. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So let's see the child. Let's see the hist historical account. Of what John is seeing in Revelations. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2. Who was the child that the woman was finna deliver to be born? That the dragon stood before to devour. This right here is finna clear cut show you exactly who the devil is biblically. All right, read what you got. Matthew 2 and 1. The book of Matthew chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Now when who? When Jesus was born in Bethlehem. This is the child that was to be delivered by the woman who was Israel, all right? This was the child. Read on. Of Judea in the days of Herod the king. In the days of who? Herod the king. So this child was being delivered in the days of a particular dragon <laughs> named Herod. Now, what did Herod do once he knew that this child was to be delivered? Read verse 13. Verse 13. Come on. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Read. And be thou there until I bring the word. Until I bring the word. For Herod will seek the child to destroy him. Herod will seek the child. To destroy him or devour him. So, who is the dragon, you know what I'm saying, that was trying to seek the child when it was to be delivered? Herod, right? Now, let's get that in the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Who is Herod? What was his race? So, we can further back up because, you know, we just trying to, you know, take scriptures out of context to say Esau and this is the white man and they the dragon and the blah, blah, blah. 
let's see who Hayride was, because obviously, you know what I'm saying, this is exactly what Revelation 12 is referring to, right? Read what you got. Herod in the Bible Dictionary. Come on. Idumian rulers of Palestine. So, when you're reading Herod in the New Testament, it's talking about a whole lineage of rulers of Palestine, which were what race? Idumian rulers. So, they was Idumian rulers, right? So, Herod was an Idumian, right? right? Let's get page 239. Who the hell is Idumia? Who is that? What does that mean? What nation is there? Read what you got. The definition of Idumia. Come on. Pertaining to Edom. Hmm. Read. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So, all it is is a New Testament confusing word, just like when you read Esaias, that's Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? When you read O.C., that's Hosea. When you read Idumia, that's talking about Edom. Esau, the Edomites. Guess what? That's exactly where Herod was. He was the dragon that was trying to seek the child to devour it. Showing you that what? The Edomites, the Esau, is the red dragon in Revelation. I mean, it's pretty clear cut, right? Right. So let's go back to Revelation 12 now and read verse 9. What does the Bible call this red dragon? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 9. Come on. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That what? That old serpent. So this dragon, this great red dragon, you know what I'm saying? The, your, your brother Esau, it said that he was that also that old serpent. That serpent that was in the Garden of Eden that, you know, manipulated the woman. And use her to get to her man to bring down humanity forever. Remember, we're going to go into them same tree. He used the same old tricks to this day. He used the same tactics, just in different, you know, modernized, you know what I'm saying, updated fashions. It's the same tricks, though. His tricks never change. It's the same spirit of that old serpent. Read on. Called the devil. And Satan. So wait a minute. So you telling me the lineage of Herod, the Idumians, the Edomites, the red and hairy people, the so-called Caucasians in the earth. What are they called in the Bible? The, that's called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Hey, we, we just reading the Bible. You know what I'm saying? We just reading the Bible. That ain't something we just say because we mad about slavery and we mad about... No! According to the Bible, Esau is the damn devil. Precept upon precept, line upon line. It is what it is. And you damn right, he have deceived the whole world. He got the whole world thinking that Jesus Christ is white. Christianity is... The way it was given to us by the white man, we wouldn't know about God or salvation or none of that if it wasn't for them. When they are actually the complete contrary to your Savior and to your God, they deceived everybody. They got everybody thinking that God is white. And the Bible is about white people and slaves of white masters. They deceived the whole damn world. That's what devil means. Deceiver who has done it. Them. All right, <laughs> for real, read on. Which deceived the whole world. Right. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, that's talking about his allies. Now read verse 12. Verse 12. Uh -huh. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto them. Right. So it says the devil is come down unto you. You all right, bro? You good? Okay. I'll pray to the most high. It say the devil. Remember, the devil is talking about a race. You know what I'm saying? The, the Caucasian race. It said the devil is come down unto you having what? Having great wrath. Having great wrath. Meaning anger, animosity, hostility. Why? Read. Because he knoweth that he has put 
He have but a short time. He have but a short time. You know what's heavy about this verse, bro? Because you got the so-called Negroes and Hispanics in America. You know what I'm saying? They sleep. They caught up in, you know, the damn NBA playoffs. They caught up in, you know what I'm saying, the damn uh, uh, Cardi B and the WAP. They caught up in a new uh, series of Power Book 2. You know what I'm saying? They caught up in all these distractions, but your enemy know exactly what time it is. He know what time it is. He know he don't got much time left. So he's mad. He's angry. We're going to show y'all an example of that real quick. Just, just We're going to show y'all what comes up when you Google black Hebrew Israelites. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to show you what comes up. Showing you how they got great wrath. Just an example. All right. When you Google black Hebrew Israelites, what do you see? You, the first link that you see is the ADL. Click on it real quick. So the first thing that you read about the black Hebrew Israelites, it says extremism, terrorism, and bigotry. Talking about a shooting that happened in Jersey City that didn't have nothing to do with no Israelites. But they constantly trying to use that event as, you know, something to say that we a hate group. But the brother was actually a Muslim. All right? But, okay, go back now. Let's see what up. Maybe, you know, that's the only bad article or whatever they got when you start, you know, in the top five things that pop up for black Hebrew Israelites. Go to the NY Times, the New York Times one. Let's see. What do we know about the French group? What the, the first thing that you see, the shooting, the deadly attack in Kosher City, that did not have a damn thing to do with the Israelites. All right, let's go back now. Let's see, maybe, you know, maybe it was just two bad articles. Let's click on that one. The Southern Poverty Law Center. Scroll down. Scroll down. The Hebrew Israelite Movement. Scroll down. Scroll down, scroll down. Let's see what the what they getting to. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I think they gonna bring up the same. Okay, you can scroll back up. So basically, this is the this is the main website that listed us as a hate group. All right. And basically, they got information or whatever to throw people off and get us to think that we are a hate group. Uh, you can go back. I think they, they mentioned something in this about the Jersey City thing, but we, we can't find it. We can't find it. All right, go to the CNN. Everybody knows CNN. Everybody watch them, huh? Let's see what they, what they brought up about the black Hebrew Israelites. This is what they pushing on social media to where if... You hear something about the Israelites, somebody get a flyer, and they don't remember exactly, you know, Israel united in Christ, you, and they just go and type in the, Israel, the black Hebrew Israelites, what's going to pop up? Hate, 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 hate. You see what I'm saying? Because they rev, they mad that we actually found out that the Bible is our book, and we able to decode it and show our people their history within. So they mad, they trying to find anything to keep our people distracted from uh, identifying with it and repenting. Again, CNN, first thing they bring up about the black Hebrew Israelites, a shooting that had nothing to do with us. All right, so you get dropped in. Now, I'm just showing y'all an example of how the dragon is raw. Because he know the, the more that we wake up and turn to this truth, the quicker that kingdom going to shut down. The kingdom... The the uh the kingdom here is going to have to be removed for God's kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Period. They know that. So they gotta constantly put out ways to hinder our building, popular persuasions, commotions, you know what I'm saying? To get the people to thinking that we a hate group and this is just another radical phase and another doctrine. No, this is the this is the truth. 
You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway, now let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. And that is read verse 15. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. Come on. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. So the serpent is still referring to the dragon. It's still referring to the devil and Satan. It's still referring to Esau. It said that this serpent cast out a flood after the woman. Read. After the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So that he might cause the woman, who is the Israelites, to be carried away of the flood. Interesting. So we know, you know what I'm saying, according to Ephesians 4 and 14, Hebrews 13 and 9, the stuff that carried us about all these years have always been doctrines, Christianity, you know what I'm saying, different denominations and beliefs, so on and so forth. But now in 2020, you know, at this point, they have stepped up their flood game. You know what I'm saying? Not only is it doctrines, you know what I'm saying, but it's also tools like social Media, it's the media, you know what I'm saying? The flood is the media, period. What they put on television, what you see on CNN, all them articles we just saw, that's a flood to keep our people distracted from realizing who they are, to carry us away from the Most High. That's the tactic that the serpent will use to keep us asleep, to keep us drowned in the doctrines of America. All right? So with that being said, Let's get that article now. Let's get journal blog. We're going to deal with one of the, the major components of that flood that they're using to carry the Israelites away from the Most High. All right? Read that. Social media distractions could be costing you nearly 50 hours a month. Remember, the name of the class is Distractions in the Last Days. Social media distractions. Now, this 2017, I know this had to have been increased by now. It said it could be costing you nearly 50 hours a month. Wow. All right, scroll down. Watch this. Go ahead. Read that. I wonder if I have any notifications. Hmm. We live in an astonishing era of techni technological advancement. That should be making us better, and they are indeed making our lives better in some aspects. But they may also be making our brains worse. Hmm. Hear me out. Right. So, so these certain things, as far as technology today, yeah, they, you know, it is good for some things or whatever, but ultimately it could be making our brains worse. Read on. Do you check your phones first thing in the morning? So remember, you know what I'm saying? We got to keep it real, Israel. You know what I'm saying? What's the first thing you do when you turn over? You know what I'm saying? Is it? Hey, like I said, we are, we are going to be getting cut. For some brothers and sisters, I hey, y'all probably on point. But I don't know. Some of y'all, I don't know. It's the first thing that you do when you roll over is hit your knees and send a prayer up towards the east to the most high? Or is it? Check your notifications. You know what I'm saying? Check your timeline. You know what I'm saying? What is it? What's the first thing that we be doing in the morning, even in the truth? Hmm. Read on. Do you check it every hour? Do you check it every hour. Read. Half hour. Every 30 minutes. Read. More. Even more frequently than that. Maybe every five. Maybe every two. Maybe every 30 seconds. Read on. Do you watch TV and have your phone out checking emails, Instagram, or Facebook? Do you be more than everything that you do? You able to combine it with checking your social media. Is that you, sis? Is that you, Ock? <laughs> Is that you? Read on. Do you use your cell phone to check social media during work? Even when you at work, when you in captivity. You know what I'm saying? You still checking your social media. Is that true? Read. Don't worry. I won't tell your boss. You can keep it real. Read on. If you answer yes to the questions, you most likely are being hacked by your own technology. You are being hacked by your own damn technology. Wow. You being hacked. 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 That means 
You know what that mean, right? You got to think. For somebody, like, to hack your account, that mean that they taking control of it. They get they getting access to what is yours. So if you're being hacked by technology, that means that the technology is getting access to your spirit, your mind. You know what I'm saying? It's getting a level of control, you know, of what belongs to you, to what God gave you. It's getting a level of control. It is hacking that's, you. That's not like witchcraft. Right. That's a witchcraft. Right. Yeah. All right, read on. Our brains have a primitive system that so that so focus is to look for the shiny thing. Mm -hmm. Originally, it was used to identify the color of a new animal that could be a predator, a one type of red berry that was poisonous, or a rustle in the bushes that could mean danger. So it's going into the, the different senses, you know what I'm saying, that trigger our brain. You know, like, you know, basically, it's, you know, basic survival in the wilderness. You you know what I'm saying? You're watching out for animals, new animals, different berries to make sure they ain't poisonous, so on and so forth, to detect danger. Your brain has an auto alert that God programmed you with, right? Like that poisonous fruit. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Read on. <laughs> it is a system of protection. That the brain is always using to be constantly aware of its surroundings in order to protect itself. So these are the succors that, re that uh, reason offers. You know what I'm saying? That the most I imparted to every man, we have a system of protection in our mind. So you got to think, if Satan's job is to take you out, what is he going to try to do to that system of protection? He going to try to infiltrate it. He going to try to decode it. He going to try to hack that thing. Just like any criminal trying to get through a security system. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. So read that next sentence. Today, today that shiny thing is no longer a predator. It's notifications, emails, and texts. So that thing, that shiny thing that went, you know, to keep your mind alert, to be on a watch out for danger, now it's been transmitted you know what I'm saying? Into notifications, emails, and texts. That's the shiny thing. That's the stuff that make your eyes light up. A ding. You know what I'm saying? A -ru -ru -ru. You know, you know them different sounds that let you know that somebody cares about you. You know what I'm saying? That's what our minds are wrapped up in now. Let's scroll down. All right, go ahead. Is that such a bad thing? Is that a bad thing? Yes. You damn right it is. Read on. There is a saying in the brain science that says, the brain wires the way it fires. The brain wires the way it fires. Read. It means that the more the brain does a specific activity, the more it lays down wiring to ingrain that process into deeper the brain, making it easier to perform the, that task next time. This is why the way, the more your practice and the what? more you practice an instrument, the better you get. They spell so it remember, <laughs> it say that the inward thought of every one of them is deep, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Esau know just like how you, you know, you do a violin every day. You know what I'm saying? You practicing in the notes or whatever. Nine months down the line, you gonna be, you gonna be short. You gonna be good at that thing. That's how the brain work. It is an ingraining process. You know what I'm saying? It, it ingrains deep into your brain to where it becomes embedded into your everyday life, your everyday activity. You know what I'm saying? It's a natural. It becomes natural to you. They understand that. Read on. The problem with const constantly? with constantly checking for the shiny things when there is no threat or danger. When there's no threat or danger, you constantly checking. For them shiny things, them alerts, that's not a danger alert or a threat alert, read. Is that we are literally wiring our brains for distraction. For what? Distraction. We are programming our brains, you know what I'm saying, to be constantly on the lookout for, constantly willing to observe distractions. Distraction, because it ain't like 
the notification in the text and like, hey, watch out. Be aware of this. Be aware of that. It's no, come look at me while the, re while the real world is still going on around you. Come attend to me on this screen while you got family around, while you got work business to handle, while you got the Lord business to handle, while you got your Bible sitting right there in front of you. No, pay attention this notification. Look, hey, so-and-so like your post now. You, I know you're going to sit up there and make sure you, you know what I'm saying, check that friend request. That might be the person you've been waiting to see your friend request. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that, that our minds are being programmed to give heed to distractions. Distra that's the name of the class. That's what Satan used to take us out of this thing. All right, read them. We're making it easier for our brains to become disconnected and distracted. So by us... With all this social media activity, we making it easier for our brains to be disconnected and distracted. If something is disconnected, that means it ain't working. You know what I'm saying? It's not active. You see what I'm saying? You got to think. That's just like, why is so much death happen behind texting and drive? Because there's no way in hell, you know what I'm saying, you can sit up there and type out a text. You know, now you could be on autopilot. It could be something that's not in front of you, but God forbid something hop in front of you while you texting. What's going to happen? Your mind is not actively engaged to driving. It's not because you're literally distracted. And that's how they program not minds. You got to think. So long ago, before we started using social media, it's no way. That we would sit up there and willingly distract ourselves like that when doing something so dangerous, you know what I'm saying, as driving on these roads. You know what I'm saying? We would never do such a thing, but they show you with so much, and you know what I'm saying, with the developing that, the essence, the imperativeness in your mind, you literally got it. You think that it's worth it to put your life on the line to look away from this road for five seconds. To check a damn comment. You know what I'm saying? To check a DM. Read on. Have you ever ran out of battery or lost service and felt notification and, and anxiety, anxiety start to creep in? So, yeah, this is going to cut. You know what I'm saying? When your battery get low or when you lose service, you start to get that feeling like, damn, what if, you know, I ain't going to be able to see who coming you know what I'm saying? That photo I just posted. You know what I'm saying? I just uploaded a, you know what I'm saying, a video. I know such and such going to trip out. Damn, I ain't going to be able to see. Hey, somebody give me a draw. You running. I need to charge my phone. All just to stay on Facebook. All just to stay on Instagram. All just to stay on Twitter. Hey, a lot of us, hey, even in this truth, a lot of us be having a notification anxiety. Read them. What if someone liked my photo? Uh huh. What if I got a message? What if someone commented? If you if you're as popular as I am, I was it, probably nothing. It was probably oh. nothing. So it says, you know, that's what you be thinking. Like, damn, when your phone there, you like, damn, what if such and such didn't like my photo? What if I didn't got a comment? What if I didn't got a message? And then you you know you charge your damn phone. Just to see that ain't nobody like your damn picture but your mama. You know what I'm saying? If anybody, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you ain't got nothing. You ain't jumping at all. But it's that anxiety. When you're not able to, to see what's going on and constantly be updated, I'm telling you, that's, it's like a drug, bro. You know what I'm saying? Esau didn't got it programmed in our mind, if, and we feel like we need it. We need to constantly be aware of who hitting us up, who got something to say, who like what we're saying, who got something to say, who's willing to share what we're saying. You see what I'm saying? We constantly got that addiction, that craving to see. And once we're not able to see it, we get that anxiety. That's how you know it's witchcraft, bro. It's witchcraft. Read on. One study found that every single time you get distracted, it takes on average, 25 minutes to get refocused. Wow. Wow. This is crazy. So you got to think, bro. You know what I'm saying? For you brothers, even sisters, when you talking to your spouse, you know what I'm saying? And that phone ding. 
And she, oh, I'm sorry, I just had to. Or, you know, your Lord said, oh, my bad, I just had to. It say it take an average of 25 minutes to get refocused. Me and what? The next few words, the next few sentences, the next conversation. And they mind, since they got distracted, mm. it's it's a high chance that it's a whole lot of womp, 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 womp. That, that, that's what you sound like in their ear. Because their mind is not fully registered to what you're saying for at least 25 minutes. That's according to science. You know what I'm saying? You got to think. That's why your wife go to the damn store and she don't come back with the thing that you made. You told her to make sure she came back with it. She, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you told me that. Yeah, I told you that. Wait, it's that distracted stuff. It say like your mind be thrown off for at least 25 minutes. That's some that's some magic trick stuff, bro. For real, read them. They also found that distractions eat close to 2.5 hours of work productivity every single day. Every single day, two and a half hours. That means society could be a whole lot better. You know, service, all that could be a whole lot better. Everything could run a whole lot better. If it weren't for social media, because we missing out on two and a half hours of productivity, you know what I'm saying, the increasing of, of greatness and exercise and creativity and all that, we being shaved two and a half hours every single day because of social media. Read on. That's 17 and a half hours a week uh -huh. and 70 hours a month. 70 hours a month. 70 hours a month. That, that's like if you work a part-time job, that's how many hours you're probably working in a month. You know what I'm saying? That's helping you pay the bills. That's how much time we spending on something that pays nothing. Yeah, you paying for it. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Think of what you could do with an extra 70 hours every single month. You see that? So you got to think, bro. That's heavy right there. You could drop that article. Go to Sirach 33.27. So it says that when you're distracted, your brain is disconnected. you distracted. Your brain is disconnected and you're distracted. Watch this. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 27. Read. Send him to labor that he, might, that he be not idle. So the Bible says, send him to labor that he be not idle. Meaning put, put him to work. That he be not idle. The word idle means inactive or disconnected. You know what I'm saying? Send him to labor that he be not idle. We just read that social media, that's what it creates. It creates idleness. It takes you away. It distracts you from labor. God says, send him to labor that he be not idle. Because why? Read. For idleness teacheth much evil. Hmm. Hmm. Let's all understand something. Social media thrives off of idleness. That's all it is. It is a tool designed to operate in your idleness. Meaning when you're not paying attention to actual work, actual family people, the real social activity in real life, you know what I'm saying? Or to the work of the Lord, what is happening? You're idle. You on your when you doing this, you idle. You see what I'm saying? And what do idleness do? Read that bottom part. Teaches much evil. And idleness teaches much evil. So a lot of the a lot of the things that we be seeing or getting engaged with on social media, a lot of time, a lot of the content, a lot of the stuff that we constantly wiring our brains with. It's evil. It's evil. We're going to get into it, though. All right, but go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Remember, in Revelation chapter 12, it said it's that old serpent. You know what I'm saying? The spirit in these Caucasians that got all this technology and creating all this stuff to keep you distracted, it's the same spirit of the serpent that begal Eve. You know, it's the same spirit. So they you. The tactics have not changed. But we're going to examine this. We're going to go into this a little bit, all right? Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. Now, the serpent was more subtle than 
any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Right. So it says the serpent. Now, you know Christianity. You know what I'm saying? They, they had it in their mind that it was a snake with legs. You know what I'm saying? That was talking to the woman. God is using a serpent to let you know the slick and sly and subtle, you know what I'm saying, characteristics of this being. It's not an actual serpent. Let's get that in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. What, what was this really in the, uh, the Garden of Eden? Read what you got. It's a book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14. Come on. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So remember, remember we went over Revelation 12 and 15, right? The flood that the serpent cast out for for majority of the years, all the, even still to this day, has been doctrines. You know what I'm saying? Christianity, false doctrine, all that to carry you away from the truth. But remember, everything evolves. You know what I'm saying? It has evolved into using media communications as a flood as well, right? So now, when it says Satan was transformed into an angel of light, in our mind, you know what I'm saying, when we see the white man, especially with the long hair and the blue eyes, first thing that come in our destroyed people's mind is Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? We look at them like the, you know, the Anglo-Saxons, the angelic beings of the earth. When they really, Satan, according to the Bible, because God said that they would be transformed into an angel of light. Likewise, even aside from religion, think about it. Who is so great? Who has the minds to create Facebook and this technology? And I can send you a text right now here in Arkansas, and your phone would ding way in Jamaica instantly. Who in the hell, what the, what the hell is that? You have to have some type of supernatural ability. You know what I'm saying? In our mind, the Negro can't create nothing like that. So those people, they have to be superior. They have to be uh, bearers of light. You know what I'm saying? They, they got some type of different levels of revelations that come unto them. You see what I'm saying? But now go back to Genesis chapter 3. So just to show that there wasn't actually, there wasn't no snake. That was dealing with Eve in the Garden of Eden. That was an angel. You know what I'm saying? An angel of light. He appeared, you know what I'm saying, in enticing to Eve. Read what you got. The book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 2. Come on. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Right. So, I'm sorry. Read verse 1 again. Verse 1. Uh -huh. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every fruit of the garden? So he tempted Eve. You know what I'm saying? Have God said you can't eat of every tree in the garden? Read on. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither Shall ye touch it, lest ye die? So she letting the serpent know, or the angel of light know, hey, you know what I'm saying? My husband taught me that God told him that we, we can eat freely of everything here except for that one tree. All right? We, except for the fruit of that one tree. Read on. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. You ain't going to die. He told you that. Girl, you know what I'm saying? Being real slick and conniving. Basically, sowing doubt in her mind. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's what they pen it. It's the same thing with these doctrines or with these why I left IUIC video. You know, them be the type of things that people throw at you. Like, do you really know if leadership is Masonic? You know what I'm saying? Do you really know what they doing with your money? You see what I'm saying? To so doubt in your mind and get you to think like, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I could be being my move. You see what I'm saying? It's the same tactics <laughs> that the devil used since the beginning of time. All right, read on. 
For God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So, remember, you know what I'm saying? God gave Adam dominion over the earth. You know what I'm saying? He was a guy on earth. But what is showing you, what did the woman have an urge? Say no. You know what I'm saying? Say no to spirits that he attack. You know what I'm saying? For real. He always on a prowl. He know, you know, what it could take to penetrate your spirit. You know what I'm saying? He play off your lust. He letting Eve know, look, basically, you can become equal to Adam. That's what they don't want you to find out. And it's the same thing that you see with this feminist movement and this word they keep throwing out, misogynistic, and all of this. They're trying to keep the woman from being empowered and all of that. You know what I'm saying? That they, that Satan is still pushing that out to this day to turn our women against us when we need y'all to cooperate so we can work together and get up out of here. But Satan got it in y'all mind like we holding y'all back. When y'all ain't nothing without us. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same. That's how he was able to penetrate Eve mind. But watch this though. Read on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. It was what? Good for food. It was good for food. Meaning good for the flesh. It felt good. Read. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was pleasant to the eyes. Meaning it looked good. Read. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. And, you know what I'm saying, it could put you on another level above others. It could exalt you. You know what I'm saying? It would be desired to make you wise. Read. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And from thenceforth was the father of mankind. We fell for the tricks of Satan. But to this day, we have not learned, you know what I'm saying? We have not got it. It is not clicked because we have been bamboozled and deceived by Satan even further. Even when we read these scriptures, we're not seeing the tactics, the tactics that he's using against us when it's in plain sight. So, mind you, it says that the fruit that Satan, the serpent, showed the woman, it was good for food, pleasant to the eyes, and desired to make one wise. Let's see if his tactics change throughout time. Let's get First John chapter two. Now, Captain Hoshaya, he been he been breaking this down over the years. You know what I'm saying? Multiple times. Just the same tactics that Satan used against Christ in Matthew four and Luke four. You know what I'm saying? To when he tempted him when he was hungry in the mountain after he fasted forty days and forty nights, he used the same tactics against the Lord and Savior. Meaning what? He confident, he know that this is what works. So I'm gonna, if it ain't broke, I ain't going to fix it. You know what I'm saying? But watch this. Watch what the apostles let us know. Read what you got. 2 and 15, bro. The book of 1 John, chapter 2 and verse 15. Come on. Love not the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that's in the world. Read. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So it's finna tell you what's in the world that does not consist of the love of the Father, read. For all that is in the world, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh. The what? The lust of the flesh. So it's telling you the things that's in the world. It wasn't in the world before the serpent beguiled Eve, and Eve gave the fruit to Adam and he ate. Prior to that, it wasn't in the world. Now, after we ate the damn fruit, you know what I'm saying, per se, the, the fruit of lies, Hosea 10, 13. Ever since then, you know what I'm saying, that is exactly what has been planted all throughout the earth. This thing, you know what I'm saying, or these variety of things that's good for food or the lust of the flesh, meaning what your flesh desires to make it feel good. Read on. And the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes, meaning what looks good, what is able to grasp your attention. Read. And the pride of life. And the what? The pride of life. The pride of life, being able to say that you're better than the next person or that you're exceeding this person or that person. That is the 
desire to make one wise. You see what I'm saying? The same thing we read in Genesis 3 is what we're reading here in 1 John chapter 2. And these are the things that are in this world, the distractions that keep you from following the Lord. Read on. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. It is not of the Father, but it's of the world. The, the earth is giving it to the hand of the wicked. That's why. That's why it's in the world. All right, let's get the uh, the YouTube video, how social media is destroying our brains. We're going to break it down for y'all to understand. What, what, did, what did we just read have to do with social media? Let's see. Now, remember, it's many other distractions out there. We're just going to deal with social media today. All right? Play that. Number two, so Paul, dependence on Paul reinforcement. Paul. All right, so we're dealing with the lust of the flesh or the good for food. We're dealing with the lust of the flesh or good for food. All right, play that. Two, dependence on reinforcement. Views, likes, and comments are all different kinds of positive reinforcement. Positive reinforcement is when someone gives you a reward for doing something good. Imagine a parent who gives their kid ice cream for behaving at the doctor. They're reinforcing their child's good behavior with a positive reward, hence the name positive reinforcement. Now, on social media, virtual compliments are no different than someone handing you an ice cream. Each one makes you feel good about yourself. It tells you that someone in the world likes you, admires you, or even envies you. It gives you a boost of self-worth which motivates you to keep going. You might feel special after posting a picture online, so you post another, and then another, until you're posting on social media every single day. And just like that, you've become dependent on positive reinforcement. You started relying on these platforms to make you feel good, and that can be dangerous. If you don't practice appreciating yourself, it gets harder and harder to do it on your own. You forget how to value yourself. Ah, uh, see, look at that dragon roll, bro. Hey. Look at the to damn dragon. To be a great dragon. photographer, there's one. I'm hey, telling you, Social man. media, bro. They make sure. They, that's why In they the use In the middle of the damn ads. point. Is it bad? Come on. Come on. So don't let social media take that away from you. The occasional boost never hurt anybody. But if you're fishing for compliments online, it can really mess with your brain. Mm, so... What is this showing us? They're showing us that you can get out the screen. They're showing us that, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the likes, the comments, the notifications, and the, the notoriety that you get, it feels so good. You know what I'm saying? It feels good to you. You really, we, it shows what we're willing to do or the level of energy we're willing to dedicate to something in order to gain love or attention from others. Let's get that in Jeremiah 2 and 33. Let's get that in Jeremiah 2 and 33. So I'm telling you, hey, these are some devices, you know what I'm saying, that Satan is using against us. All right, read what you got. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 33. Come on. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? To do what? To seek love. So God said about the Israelites, you know what I'm saying, we have a tendency to trim our ways to seek love. Meaning what? In the context of social media, right? You could be a hardworking man. You could be a family man. But when you get wrapped up in social media, you will literally take time out from your family, from your work, from the work of the Lord, to tend to social media to, get that, to fulfill that lust of likes comments, attention, love from anywhere from 500 to 5,000 friends, anywhere from 5,000 to 5 million followers, for real, to seek that love, people will go to a very high extent. You got some people that devote their whole life into trying to get famous on social media because that, that's how strong that lust of the flesh is. That's how strongly we crave love from others, and we'll be willing to trim our whole life, you know what I'm saying, to get that love and to get that attention. Esau know that. The serpent knows that, and he plays against that lust, all right? So now, 
We going to deal with the pleasant to the eyes or the lust of the eyes. Go back to the video and start at the next time step. All right. 338. All right, go ahead. Number three, wasting our time. Social media is a notorious time waster. Without even realizing it, you might spend hours every single day browsing through different platforms. Some people lie awake in bed scrolling through page after page until it's suddenly two in the morning. Others use social media in small bursts. They might spend only five minutes at a time on their phone, but they do this every single hour of the day. It seems like they're barely ever on social media, but those five-minute increments really add up. By the evening time, you've lost an hour or more of your time, which you could have spent on work, hobbies, or with your family. Time is one area where social media becomes especially destructive. It twists the way you think. It distracts you with all those buttons, pictures, and videos, hmm. and your brain loses track of time. Hmm. Wow. That's heavy right there. So basically, it's saying that social media keep your eyes peeled. You feel like you can't miss nothing because everything that you see on your timeline is pleasant to your eyes. Meaning you're willing to stay up till 3, 4 in the morning when you got to be at work at them. Just to, you know what I'm saying, Just keep stay updated on Instagram. Follow them stories of them people that you like. You know what I'm saying? See them females, if you brothers... It's sisters too. I ain't none of y'all exempt. We gonna get into that as well. But you know, it's actually you would think that it's not, but it's hard to find like content of people speaking on that. You know what I'm saying? And how people spend so much time on social media, like lusting. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to find content on that. But that's what that's a that's a big pleasant to the eyes factor. They keep people's eyes peeled on it for hours and hours and hours of the day. Some people do it in increments, so they feel less guilty. I don't be on social media that much. I just check it like every 30 minutes and for five minutes at a time. When you add that up for the day, that means that at the end of the day, you just spent two, three, four hours. You, you no different than that person that lay in the bed at 10 o'clock and be on there until 1 in the morning. You see what I'm saying? But it's pleasant to the eyes. It keep your eyes peeled. It's always something on there that you want to see. Let's get that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 verse 12. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 12. Uh -huh. For the bewitching of naughtiness. What's the word that you was using to describe, you know what I'm saying, how they, how they tapping into our brains to use our, our God-given senses against us? To give in to distractions. What did you call that? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Guess what? That's exactly what we're reading about in the Bible. Spiritual witchcraft. Not, you know, some abracadabra. Somebody with, you know, flying on a damn broomstick. Just talking about the bewitching of naughtiness. Naughty. I, I would say it's a lot of naughtiness on social media. More than righteousness, I'll say that. But what does the bewitching of naughtiness do, right? Does obscure things that are honest. It blurs the things that you know is right. Read on. And the wandering of cu cu concupiscence. The what? The wandering of concupiscence uh -huh. does undermine the simple mind. Meaning it wears your brain down. It wears your brain down. So let's get the, what is wandering, the wandering of concupiscence? What is that? What does that have to do with social media? Look, let's pull up wander. Now watch this. Read that. To wander, walk or move in a leisurely, casual, or aimlessly, aimless way. Or to walk or move in a leisurely, casual, or aimless way. Meaning what? It's just like when you pull out your phone and you lie a lot because you got leisure time. And you, you don't care what the hell you scroll up on. You're just scrolling. You know what I'm saying? Look. Look at the first word. It says stroll. stroll. If you replace that T with a C, what you got? Scroll. <laughs> it's the same thing. You wondering. You pick you up scrolling. your phone. You unlock it. You you strolling through Instagram. You strolling through Facebook. You know what I'm saying? It's just the fact that it's digital. Digital. You using your finger. It's scrolling. 
but it's really wondering. You just, you know, la, 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 you know, maybe I'll find something interesting. Maybe I'll find something thought-provoking. Maybe I'll find, you know, every time a, a righteous Israelite open their phone and they get on social media is in hopes, per se, of finding a good video, a good class, right. you know what I'm saying, or whatever. And then, I don't know, three, four hours later, you know what I'm saying, you didn't post it. 10 memes that ain't got a damn thing to do with the Bible. You done engaged in the, in the debates about who the best rapper or who the best actor. Right. You know what I'm saying? Stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. And where does that come from? Wondering. You just la 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 la. Oh, that's interesting. Let me, get, let me put my two cents in. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But now let's look up concupiscence because we're going to deal with this right here. The wondering of concupiscence. What does concupiscence mean? Concupiscence. Strong sexual desire. Lust. Strong sexual desire or lust. This is a big, a huge activity, you know what I'm saying, that takes place in the use of social media, even with you righteous, replenished Israelites. You know what I'm saying? For real, a lot of y'all spend y'all time looking at you know, the opposite sex and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Scheming and plotting or wishing or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, some but some married brothers and sisters, they be on some woulda, coulda, shoulda stuff looking at, you know, they still got them old friends from the past on their timeline. For real, I had, to, I had to wise up when I came into the truth. I said, nope, I got to block her and I got to block her too and her too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because if I get to see her on my timeline too much, I'ma constantly be tempted. Like I know I, I, I know I still got. I know she still. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of us, hey, we spend a lot of time wondering. You know what I'm saying? And our concupiscence and our lust. And social media is the perfect platform to do so. Cause that's where everybody posts their pictures and they, you know, what they got going in their life and how good they look. And all of that. You see what I'm saying? Now watch this. Go to Sirach chapter 9. Sirach chapter 9. We're still dealing with wandering. It's what pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes. Sirach chapter 9 verse and five. verse, I want verse 7. The book of you can start at 5. Start at 5. The book of Sirach chapter 9 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Gaze not on a maid. So the word gaze means to stare, like in, in mesmerization. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how you be scrolling, then you see that one, you you know, you might be scrolling fast. You know what I'm saying? And then you you see that Stop. one beautiful flash of, you know what I'm saying, woman. And you all scroll. Hold on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. <laughs> God said don't do that. I right, don't guess. Oh, the man, read them. That thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. Right, the same stuff that she posting, you know what I'm saying, that's so precious, what cause you to fall, read. Give not thy soul unto harlots, Come on. that thou lose not thy inheritance. Watch this. Look not round about thee. In the streets of the city. In the streets of the city. Read on. Neither wonder. Neither, neither what? Wonder. Neither wonder. Read. Thou in the solitary places thereof. Now I want, I want us to look at this part. It says, neither wonder thou in the solitary places thereof. Now we know there's going into like buildings, made like clubs, you know what I'm saying? Different establishments where you can see. The opposite sex, you know, the female or whatever, and you'll be able to gaze. You'll be able to look up on and lust after them. Esau then made it to where you're a solitary place that you can wander upon the opposite sex can be in the comfort of your own home. How? How? How so? You could just be sitting at home all day, just wondering, just, oh, damn, she, damn. God, it's not a DM. You see what I'm saying? God said, don't do that. Don't be doing that wandering. Because that's the wandering of concupiscence. It said it undermines the simple mind. Doing so much of that eventually is going to weigh down all that knowledge and all them scriptures you've been learning to try to get built up. 
I'm telling you, you're going to fall to that lust. You're going to fall to that lust. That's why God said, don't do it. Do not do it. All right, from there, go to Job chapter 15. Still dealing with the pleasant to the eyes. Job chapter 15 and verse 12. The book of Job chapter 15 and verse 12. Come on. Why does thine heart carry thee away? Why does your mind carry you away? Remember, it said that the serpent cast out a flood after the woman, meaning the Israelites, to carry them away. What have they done with this social media in the first article? They have tapped into our minds, our heart. It says, why do your heart carry you away? Read on. And what do thy eyes wink at? What does your what? Eyes wink at. What completely grasps your attention. You know what I'm saying? To where you, you know, it's certain things that you wouldn't do around certain people that you do in the... You know what I'm saying? What is it that caused your eyes to wink? Hmm. We got to identify this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And this is what say no, and this is what he play on. Read on. That thou turnest thy spirit against God. That thou what? Turnest thy spirit against God. So understand, it's the same tactic that the serpent used against Eve. This is how he got Adam and Eve to turn their spirit against God. With something pleasant to the eyes. Something that looks good, something that's able to keep your attention, keep your eyes peeled for hours. You see what I'm saying? We got to be able to identify that. Is that Facebook for you? Is that Instagram? Is that TikTok, brother? You know what I'm Tinder. saying? For real. What you say? You got Tinder, all these other little what other. What the hell is that? Other, they, got, they got social media, you know, uh, the different platforms where you can go meet, Tinder. meet somebody. That's a dick and love will be using that word. What the hell? You got uh, Tinder. And you know what? You, you say it's called Tinder. Right. <laughs> you want some Tinder. What the hell is this? They got, you got blackpeoplemeet.com. You got all type, of, all type of websites to use to try to get you to. Follow your lust. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be able to identify what, what is able to grasp my attention and keep my eyes peeled that will really ultimately turn my spirit against God. We got to be able to identify that thing because say no. Say no. Own it. <laughs> For real. From there, let's deal with the pride of life now. Let's deal with the last tactic. Well, the, a tree desired to make one wise. The pride of life. All right, let's get the next. Let's go back to the video and get that next timestamp. Watch this, y'all. You ready? Go ahead. Life is full of important moments. Uh, Think on your sure favorite vacations. They gotta hear the, uh, on they gotta hear the, what do you say? Yeah, what are you talking about? Play. Again. Number one, editing our lives. Editing Life our is full lives. of lives. Go ahead. Important moments. Think on your favorite vacations, on holiday dinners with your family, on the biggest stepping stones in your career. These are the kinds of moments that you want to remember forever, right? But for many people, just remembering isn't good enough. They want a physical reminder of what those moments felt like. So they take pictures, they record videos, and they keep souvenirs. These reminders transport them back in time, letting them relive the joy, beauty, or surprise of a single moment from their past. But when you start posting those photos on social media, something strange happens. You stop focusing on the moment itself. You stop remembering what really happened, and you start thinking about what you can change. You start cutting photos you don't look your best in, even if that photo makes you laugh or cry. You start doctoring how your experiences looked or felt. Why is that? Because you want other people to see how perfect and powerful your life is. Pride of life. Many people on social media are so focused on displaying perfection that their real life gets lost in the mix. The person on their profile may resemble an idealized version of themselves. They've changed their whole life just to impress a bunch of people on the internet. If you start editing your life, you stop appreciating how imperfect it can be. 
If you look at a sunset, you might focus on taking the perfect picture, brightening the colors, or creating the right mood, instead of actually enjoying the sunset in real time. You pay less and less attention to the powerful moments as they happen, and you stop appreciating experiences for what they are. Each one just feels like another opportunity to brag on social media. Wow. So what is what? This is heavy right here. I'm cut. I'm cut. Basically, he's saying, like, say, for example, you go to a beautiful waterfall or something. Instead of like a regular human being 30 years ago just going to enjoy a waterfall, the first thing that you do is pull out your damn phone. I got to I gotta capture this. I got to get this on camera wow. so I can get a post and I get people to be like, wow, love, like, share. That's your first mindset pertaining to the waterfall instead of actually embracing it like right. a regular human. Right. What is that? That means we have become vain. We have become vain. The stuff that we're doing ain't even for the purpose of really doing it. It's for the purpose of being able to post it on social media. Mm. For the pride of life so people can see where we been, what we saw. Instead of just embracing where we at and what we seeing. We have become vain. Let's get that in Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. Watch this, y'all. It's the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. This I say, therefore... And testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Walk not as other Gentiles walk, meaning people in the world. Read on. In the vanity of their mind. In the what? Vanity of their mind. In the vanity. The people in the world, they walking. All they posting, all that is walking in the vanity of their mind. Let's see what that word means. What is that? The vanity of the mind. Let's get that. We eat that up. Vanity. Excessive pride in or admiration of one's own appearance or achievement. The pride of life. The pride of life. That's what vanity is. And that's what this whole world is walking in. And that you, social media is the biggest tool to do so. Vanity. Just, you know what I'm saying? Some some people just be bored. They ain't getting no attention. Ain't nobody hitting them up. Let me put out a controversial, controversial post so my notifications can blow up. You see what I'm saying? It ain't because I actually want to engage in conversation. It's because I want some attention. I want people, to, you know what I'm saying, to be able to talk about my posts. You know what I'm saying? The pride of like vanity. That's the type of stuff that social media got us wrapped up in, y'all, for real. All right, now let's get the next one because we still on a pride of life, but it's another element that was in this video that went into it as well. Let's play that. The next time step should be the cycle of jealousy. Play that. Number six, the cycle of jealousy. Every time you log on to your account, you participate in a jealous cycle. In fact, many social media users try to create that jealousy in other people. The cycle of jealousy starts when you browse through the profile of someone you admire. Now, in your eyes, they're doing something amazing and you respect or you envy them for it. So you try to make your profile look amazing too. But that just means someone else is going to look at your pictures and think, Wow, I wish I was doing that. And they're going to carry that feeling into their own virtual lives. And just like that, a chain of jealousy can span across dozens or even hundreds of people. So, how does that jealousy impact your brain? Suddenly, you're not thinking about the life you want. You're not living for you anymore. You're living to make other people jealous. <laughs> you only feel satisfied when people envy you. And you get bitter when they don't. My point is, social media pulls you into this vicious cycle. If you're not careful, you'll lose sight of what really matters. Hey, let's get that in 2 Corinthians 10 and 12. For real, basically it's saying what? You base your whole life on somebody else's profile. You know what I'm saying? So you can get your profile to where people feel the same way you felt about that person's profile about your profile. You see what I'm saying? It's a, a cycle of jealousy. What is the pride of life? You want people, you thrive 
of people being jealous of you. You thrive on people wanting to be like you. That is the environment, the culture that social media creates. Read what you got. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Come on. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Come on. But they measuring themselves by themselves. They what? Measuring the mirrors. Measuring, measuring themselves by themselves, come on, and comparing themselves among themselves, comparing themselves among themselves. Oh, see, he got this many followers, you know what I'm saying? But I know I can get this many if I post, you know what I'm saying? I bet, I bet I could really. Well, my, my, I got more uh, real followers, he got the bought ones, you know what I'm saying? He posting the shoe, I got them shoes too, you see what I'm saying? All of this. Comparing this stuff going on. That's what social media is. A tool to compare your life against the next person's life. God said comparing themselves among themselves is what? Not wise. That is not wise. But that's what Esau got you doing day in and day out on social media. All right, let's get 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Telling you, brother, pride of life. The pride of social media is the, man, that's so crafty how they did that. It's, it sets you up for the alley-oop. Ugh! Pride of life. You know what I'm saying? I teach you to be Set you up for it. You know what I'm saying? Read what you got. The book of first, uh, Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Come on. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What's the name of the class? Distractions in the last days. You telling me, while we getting closer and closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the destruction of the world as we know it, as we getting closer and closer, we're entering perilous times. People's minds ain't going in the right direction. You see what I'm saying? Vanity is all over. The we in the age of decadence. That's what God is saying. In the last days, these are the times, these are the things that we will witness and as we read, I'm telling you, majority of what we finna read, you witness it every day on your Facebook timeline, your Twitter timeline, your IG timeline. For real. Watch this. Read what you got. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Read that part again. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Look at me, yo. Selfie, yo. I got my pen. Look. Hey, yo. You know what I'm saying? That's all you see. That's all you see, especially with the sisters, man. Mm. I don't need nobody. And I, if you don't need nobody, you, if you so independent, if you so, you know what I'm saying? Why the hell do you got to post, you know what I'm saying, to your follower, to your following every minute of the damn day? You know what I'm saying? Why are you checking your notifications? Why are you concerned about how many likes you getting if you don't need nobody? You see what I'm saying? But, hey, that's what people want to be able to say, that I look good. You know what I'm saying? I'm clean. I'm fresh. Tell me I'm pretty because I know I am. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, what, that's the display on social media. People are loving the hell out of their self. Pride. Vanity. Read on. Covetous. Covetous. That goes into that cycle of jealousy. Oh, damn. He got that? Oh, I'm going to go get that. I didn't hear it, but I ain't. Go ahead. Boasters. Boasters. Showing off what you got. Uh, uh, who, who who know about uh, Nino Brown? Y'all know about Nino Brown, the dude? Always bragging about what he didn't did and what he can do or what he got or what. You know what I'm saying? That's the culture on social media. Who can talk the most S-word? You know what I'm saying? Who can show off the most of what they got? Who can gloat, you know what I'm saying, on the possessions that they've been able to obtain? That's the culture on social media. Read on. Proud. What? Proud. Pride. The pride of life. Read on. Blasphemous. Come on. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Right. And that's what you see with a lot of our youth on social media. You know what I'm saying? You got 12, 13-year-olds posting pictures with... Damn 30 clippy stitches on their hip in front of their damn mama house. You know? <laughs> For real, that, that's, that's disrespectful. 
That ain't right. But that's what we're seeing in these last days as we getting near the end. Read. Without natural affection. Without what? Without natural affection. You also see a very high increase. You don't even know if that person that you're following, you know, with all the, all the makeup and, the, you know, doing this with their hair, you really don't know unless you know that person that you knew them from elementary or something. You really don't know what that is. <laughs> you don't know if that's a girl. You don't know if it's a boy. You know what I'm saying? For real. Because, hey, you see a lot of homo activity going on. Our people do not have, they're losing natural affection. Read on. False accusers. False, the, the rumors, the gossip. That, hey, a lot of people be caught up in that all day, distracted by uh, uh, some uh, academics, uh, NBA young boy, uh, he got locked up. Uh, 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 the FBG Duck, his homeboy set him up. You see what I'm saying? Just a whole bunch of rumors and lies and gossip. Our people be caught up in that all day, every day. On social media. Read on. Incontinent. Incontinent. That means the inability to, to control yourself, to contain yourself. That's like the uh the the people that you that you'll watch that be entertaining like boom gang. I think that's his name. Yeah, yeah, he, he quick yeah. He quick to go off and like basically our people uh like even with NBA Young Boy, our people get a sensation out of seeing people like not give a damn about life. You know what I'm saying? The inability to control themselves. That, that's exciting. At any given moment, they can snap. snap. World, world star. You know, world star. No discipline, nothing. Just all out. That's what you see all day on social media. Read on. Fierce. Fierce. Read on. Despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Read on. Traitors. Uh-huh. Heady. High-minded. High-minded. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Everybody think they a damn guru on Facebook. Everybody think that they post is just so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, psh, like they damn King Solomon or something. Like they got the new proverb, the 2020 version of Proverbs. You know what I'm saying? That's how high-minded people get it because they get 43 likes on the damn post. And they thrive off of that. You see what I'm saying? That's what we see. Read. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And that's, that's the whole objective of it all. That's the whole reason, you know what I'm saying, of that flood being pushed on our people. It's to get you caught up in that realm of, you know, self-absorbance of all that attention and notoriety or whatever. And you start to care more about that than you care about the most high. How many people can honestly say, and it's true. You know what I'm saying? I'm, just, I'm not exempt. How many people can say that they read their Bible, they read their history book more than they read their timeline on Facebook? How many people can say that? You see what I'm saying? Do, do you, how often do you check the study group? You know what I'm saying? How often do you check your Bible for new precepts as opposed to how often you check your notifications. You see what I'm saying? You tell me. That's the culture that Satan has created for our people using social media. And you got brothers and, and sisters in the truth falling into that. That's why we got to wake the hell up. We can't let that stuff distract us, man. For real. For real, let's go back to Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 15. So we dealt with the flood in terms of social media. It's a lot more that go with that. Understand that. That's why it was a colon for social media. It's many, it's many other distractions in these last days. But I would say, I would confidently say that social media is the biggest one. For real. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 15. Come on. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. To carry your heart, to turn your spirit away from God. That's what it's all about. To get, get you to love yourself, love the attention, love the, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 that rush that you get from social media, from likes, comments, following, people following you, people trying to befriend you over 
you know, devoting your attention to the most high God. For real. That's the objective of it, to carry you away from the most high. He wants you distracted. The more you spending two, three hours looking at them funny memes and you think you're so innocent or whatever, Satan like, you know, that hand rub, that bird man gif, that was Satan doing. He like, you know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, the most high, like, hey, hey, sit up a prayer or something. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when you going to open that book? Yeah, you ain't learned a new precept since the Sabbath. It's Thursday. You see what I'm saying? Hey, that's the whole objective of this stuff. I'm telling you. But watch this, though. Read on. And the earth helped the woman. The what? The earth helped the woman. So with this flood being cast out against the Israelites, the Bible said that the earth would help the woman. Let's get that. What is the earth? What is that making reference to? Let's get that in Psalms 85 and 11. So even with this flood, with the whole objective to carry us away from the Most High God with these social media distractions, what would end up helping us to overcome that? Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 85 and verse 11. Come on. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth. That's what the earth in Revelation is referring to, that help the woman, meaning the Israelites. The truth. Let's go back now. Read verse 16. The book of Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 16. Come on. And the earth helped the woman. Right. The truth helped the woman. Read on. And the earth opened her mouth. Come on. And swallowed up the blood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So this earth, meaning the truth, will be able to swallow up all the, the flood waters that the enemy is sending against us to carry us away from the Most High God. Now, watch this. Let's get them, uh, them screenshots up on the screen. So he developed this social media to tap into our brain and hack us to keep our attention away from God. Meanwhile, we able to get on social media and guide our people back to the most high, from the youngest to the oldest. Look at this. We got uh, cartoons for the kids. So when they get on social media, they can actually learn about their God. This is a part of swallowing up the floods, y'all. For real. That's why you people... That's in these offices to get the, the develop these things. Understand how important your job is. You are that earth that's swallowing up the flood. Let's get the next screenshot. Come on. All right, IUIC documentaries. You you got IUIC reports. You got the little short cut straight to the point that you can learn about your history that they never taught you in school. All the way up to hour long documentaries, the way you can learn about your history. Instead of watching damn documentaries on Netflix about, uh, what's his name, uh, Griselda Blanco, uh, you know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan. They get you enticed, to get you reminiscing on when you was in a drug game or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Let's go, let's go to the next one. All right, this is something we also got on social, we use social media to help us find our missing brothers and sisters. And we see that we have actually found missing brothers and sisters. With the help, this is a hey, this is a part of swallowing up the flood. You know what I'm saying? While it's said to distract you, we're using it to really find our people. All right, let's get the next one. Or oh, is that it? Okay, IUIC Renaissance. A lot of people not aware that the Bible is their history book. So we use using social media to put out the the proper biblical imagery. Portraying, you know, our history, where we really came from, you know what I'm saying? You know, instilling that, the proper imagery in our children, yeah, even our adult minds. We still struggle. A lot of times we read the Bible, we still see white people in our head. And it also got images or whatnot of us during the dark ages, what they've been hiding for, from us for hundreds of years. All right, is that the last one? All right, now let's play the video now. This is something that we also flooding the, the the social media gates, you know what I'm saying, with. All right, play that. And let us fight for our people and for the sanctuary. We're fighting for the hearts and minds of our people that do not yet know who they are. 
But we are their champions. We are their superheroes, so to speak. Believe that. We're serious. Ain't no laughter. We ain't got time for shucking and jiving. We got issues going on with the nation of Israel. Our young men are so starved for leaders. And the mother recognizes that we have no stars, that we have no leaders, that we have no superheroes. And because of that absence of an image, all kinds of uh, uh, psychological destruction has permeated the brains of our people. Be honest with you, pay attention. Sons have gone! Yeah. Us against the world, what we deserve. What against our soul, it's a God we serve. Yeah. Us against the world, us against the world. Working for the kingdom come, no time to observe. Us against the world, dragging what we heard. Ain't no stopping this, 7,000 on reserve. Yeah. Salute to the God and the captain of the host, the angels is cut for It's a war for your soul, army of the living God. All right, all praise to the most high. So we blazing social media with the army of God. You see that? Put it in, basically, undistracted. They on social media being distracted. And they mess around and see a whole bunch of black men standing strong and in order and in discipline. So they never seen before. You know what I'm saying? And hey, that's how a lot of people come into this truth. You know what I'm saying? On social media, in the midst of evil, in the midst of being an idol, and they mess around and see the earth that helped the woman. You know what I'm saying? The truth. For real. That's how a lot of us came into the truth. We stumbled across it on social media. Right. So we got to make sure us in this truth, we got to understand, you know what I'm saying? Don't fall into the trick of Satan and use social media for the wrong reasons. We got access to social media now to undistract our people and guide them to the light. All right, let's get that in Isaiah 59, 19. Isaiah 59, verse 19. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 19. Come on. So shall they fear the name of the Lord Come on. from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Come on. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. That's exactly what we read in Revelation, just in plainer terms. When the enemy shall come in like a flood with all these things to distract you and carry you away from God, what would God do? Read. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Right. The spirit of the Lord is lifting up a standard against the white man's devices to keep us asleep. And that's the Israelites united in Christ. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With the word of God, that's the standard that's being lifted up on the same platform set up to destroy our people. You see that? That's amazing. It's amazing what the Most High doing, man. Let's go to Genesis 50 and verse 20. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. You got to think, this type of stuff was created to keep that phenomenon going. You know, well, basically, to stop the phenomenon from happening. Willie Lynn said, it's going to have to be some thousands of years. It's going to take a phenomenon for them to break these mental chains that we got up on them. So they've been leveling up. They face my space. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You know what I'm saying? It's ironic they developed TikTok because they know their time is short. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> TikTok, <laughs> for real. They really trying their best to keep us asleep, not knowing that the Israelites hitting all these platforms with the truth, with the word of God, that standard, you know what I'm saying, by the spirit of the Lord. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Come on. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. Right, you thought evil against the Israelites. You thought t uh, tactics of distraction against the Israelites, read. But God meant it unto good. But this same platforms you established, God is allowing the truth to be spread like wildfire on them platforms. Read on. To bring to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Right, to save our people. From there, go to Romans 8 and 28. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. 
Watch this. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So all things work together for good. They meant it for evil. They meant it to destroy us. But in the end, God always said, it's, he set everything up to end up for our good. You know what I'm saying? To the uh, to get us to the point of being saved and be recovered from the grasp of Satan that he had on us. You know what I'm saying? From there, go to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. So with that being said, we got to understand when we on these platforms and when we using these, you know what I'm saying, the, the social media and things of that nature, we have to be very mindful. You can either fall into what Satan set it up for to carry your mind away from God, or, you know what I'm saying, you can use it to set up standard against him to spread this truth. We got to understand that. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So don't think you could just willy-nilly get on social media. I ain't going to be distracted. I'm, I'm just going straight to the class. I'm telling you, that's the, real, that's the only reason I still got Facebook. To share IUIC Arkansas posts and IUIC period. And for IUIC classrooms, you know what I'm saying? That's it. For real. Because a lot of us, we think we can do that, you know what I'm saying, not understanding if you jump on that without the full armor of God on, you're going to find yourself lusting. You're going to find yourself wasting time. You're going to find yourself debating, causing strife. We think just because it's on a post, it's not actual works of the flesh, like strife, debate, variance, you know what I'm saying? We think just because it's on a post, we not transgressing against the Lord like the Lord can't see your damn post. You see what I'm saying? When you get on these networks without the armor of God on, you will find yourself in the midst of, of folly and evil, just like the enemy set it up for you to do. So we got to understand that we got to put on a whole armor of God before we put ourselves on these platforms. All right, let's get the definition of wows. Say the only way that we can stand against the wiles of the devil is with the full armor of God on. Read this. Wow. Devious or. <laughs> right. Wow. Not wow. Like wow. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Devious or cunning st stratagems. Stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. You see that devious, cunning tricks. You know what I'm saying? A strategy. Uh, I know this going to keep him distracted. This going to keep his mind occupied. He ain't finna be learning scriptures. You know what I'm saying? He ain't finna be going hard for the Lord. He going to be occupied, you know what I'm saying, with keeping, you know, keeping his status updated or keeping up with that person that he following that he likes so much. You see what I'm saying? So in order to not fall into them wilds that the, mo that, uh, the most low, <laughs> Satan, you know what I'm saying, that he set up on social media to distract you, you must have the whole armor of God on, period. Understand that. Let's go to Romans 6 and 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Come on, sir. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. You know ye not to whom ye yield, meaning allow yourselves servants to obey, read. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. You become the servants unto that which ye obey, read. Whether of sin unto death. So you either, like the Bible says in Matthew 6, 24, is two masters. The word master is associated alone with control, with order. It's only one or two people order, orders that you're following. You know what I'm saying? You're either following the orders of God or the orders of Satan. So when you get on social media, you either going to allow yourself to fall into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, or to help the woman, to help the Israelites, to feed them with the truth, to lift up that standard against him. All right? It's either going to be unto sin, 
to lust, read on, or or of obedience. Or of, or of obedience unto righteousness. So you're going to be either doing one of the two things when you get on these platforms. You're either going to be serving sin or you're going to be serving righteousness. You're going to serve the purpose of Satan and fall into the wiles that he set up against you. Or you're going to fall into the plan of God to work out for good to them that love him. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19. Come on. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Read. For as ye have yielded yourself, yours, your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity. So just like, because you got to think, we all had our time before the truth. We all had our profiles and pages before the truth. You had plenty of time to post all that nonsense and the smoking and the drinking and the partying and the, the, the clothes and the new this and the new that. We all didn't had that, and we all at one time submitted ourselves unto that. So just like we devoted that energy to the evil on social media, now that you in the truth, read on. Even so now, yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. So don't get on social media doing the same damn thing you was doing in the world. Use that platform to help the Israelites push this truth and get our people out of captivity. Because if you're not doing that, you either doing one or the other. If you're not using it for that, I'm telling you, you are only being distracted by Satan. That's it. For real. Go to Sirach 37 and 27. We almost through. Sirach 37 and 27. Come on, bro. The book of Sirach, chapter 37 and verse 27. 27. My son, prove thy soul in thy life. And see what is evil for it. A lot of us don't want to come to grips or to the realization that social media is nothing but toxicity in our life. It keep us distracted. It keep us lusting. You got brothers that say they battle with less. Meanwhile, them be the main brothers that you see and posting on social media all day, every day. You see what I'm saying? What the hell is wrong with you, bro? You got to know what's evil for your life. You got to know what's holding you back in this truth. And it might be Facebook. It might be Instagram. Read on. And give not that unto it. Once you're able to identify what carries your heart away from God, you're supposed to have that discipline to refrain yourself from it. That's what these classes are for. That's what edification is for, to build you up, to fight against the wiles of Satan. You got to be able to identify that and recognize that and mortify that member. Read on. For all things are not profitable for all men. Social media is not profitable for everybody. For some people, it's only detrimental to their walking this truth, period. Not everybody can use social media for their business or to share a video. Some people, they get on social media and it destroys them. It only distracts them. You got to understand and know if that's you. Maybe it's not true to that full extent, but you need to cut down. That's also what God is saying. You got to know what's not profitable unto you. All things ain't profitable for everybody. Read on. Neither have soul, n neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Not, I, neither has every soul pleasure in everything. You know what I'm saying? So social media ain't for everybody. If that's what's hindering you and holding you back in this truth, uh, delete. <laughs> period for real because Satan just going to continue to use that against you alright last scripture 1 Corinthians 7 and 35 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 35 the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 35 Come on. and this I speak for your own profit not that I may cast a snare upon you right so we bringing out this class not to cut you up and make you feel bad and make you you know what I'm saying Oh, uh, he's he, he, like, he don't got social media, blah, blah, blah. This is for your profit, not to cast a snare up on you, not to develop notification anxiety and kill your damn self, trying to go <laughs> seven days without trying to delete your Facebook, Bastard. you can't handle it. Bastard. You know what I'm saying? Bastard. This ain't to cast no snare up on you. Read on. But for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. That's the purpose of this class, to show you. Satan is using these things against you. And we're showing you, hey, you can use it for the truth. 
But if you got to abstain from it, you need to abstain from it so you can attend to the Lord without distraction. Because that is the biggest distraction in these last days. You got all these wildfires popping off. You got the pandemic. You got wars. You got all type of madness going on in the earth. Prophecy is being fulfilled. We getting closer and closer to the end. But you worried about why sister didn't like your post. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you worried about, you know what I'm saying, why a brother had a certain comment on your post. You know what I'm saying? Hey, that, that ain't nothing. It's set up to distract you, man. It's time to wake up. And, hey, it's time to get it in. It's time to get it in and get the hell up out of here. You know what I'm saying? That's the purpose of this class, to attend up on the Lord without distraction. All right? So, look. Hey, I pray everybody was edified. You know what I'm saying? I pray we got the understanding. And I hope ain't nobody confused. I think I made it pretty clear. You know what I'm saying? Social media is a tool developed by the enemy to distract you. But God made it to where we can use it for, for good, to help one another, to build one another up with the classes, with the information, with the, the cartoons for the kids and all of that. So you got to make sure you're using it. For the most high and not falling into what the white man set it up for in the first place to distract you. All right. So with that, hey, I'll pray to the most high. Hope everybody have a prosperous day. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Hey, y'all, hey, hey, one second for you, how about? Oh. Hold on. So, this Sunday on Let's Talk True Radio on the Real Underground Radio, IUIC Arkansas will be going even deeper into this topic. Social media, is it a blessing or a curse? All right, tune in to that. Y'all already going to know where we're going with it. Right. But make sure you tune in there. There's going to be a lot of content, a lot of scriptures that didn't even get pulled today. All right, so make sure y'all tune in to that this Sunday, all right? And subscribe to IUIC Arkansas with that. Now, shalom. Shalom. From the feet of Gamaliel to the carcass of Stephen. I was excelling the zeal of my brethren. I was not without that change in the regimen. I put through hell who I thought was a heretic, huh? I was a whole different specimen, Pharisee. It wasn't fair, I wasn't sparing them, huh? If they was spreading that resurrect rhetoric, I'm gonna be there when they bury them, huh? I'm on my way to Damascus, finna get licensed to get on their asses, yeah. Forsaking the elders' traditions for madness, no, I ain't giving no passes. I'm on my nag and suddenly light shine. Felt like the sun running up on me, damn. It wasn't the sun, but I'd be damned. It was the son of man, got knocked to the earth, I'm shocked and I'm hurt, can barely breathe, heart pounding, then I hear a voice sounding, why persecutest thou me, I'm so confused, like what did I do, I know you an angel or something, but who, he said all that violence that you been inciting, I am the one you was doing it to, at this point I'm really terrified, Lord what can I do for you to spread my life, he told me arise, go on a Damascus, Cause you see what's next, you, you gon' be alright When he departed, he left with my sight I couldn't see at all When no turning back, he put me on track He turned me from Saul to Paul I used to blaspheme, and I did it ignorantly And I did it all in unbelief Until the Lord enabled me Now I'm praying that I never leave And you don't take the spirit from me I was walking in the flesh so carnally didn't understand the truth, but now I say, now and I say And the put his hands on me And then I went straight away Only teaching the gospel of the king Now they waiting for my blood at the gate But oh well, when I was doing evil, they treated me so well But now they only beat me and throw me in cold cells Taught in all the city and they show me no pity But do 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 they know they opposing their own selves Look, I gotta keep pushing, I gotta keep going I got so much work to do I set up some churches and put out some doctors I can't get comfortable I gotta wake up the northern kingdom 
Many offended at what I'm teaching Showing the torch out some true repentance Now I'm delivered to King Agrippa Think myself happy, I speak for myself I'm not causing riots or causing rebel Showing Samaria the commonwealth They so selfish, damn I thought they would get it because I'm a Jew Keeping the custom since I was a youth No shock my brethren, rejecting the truth Which of the fathers they ain't persecute